Hi, I'm Julie Feifan Balzer, and I'm super excited to show you how we're going to cut our own stencils using the Brother Scan and Cut, and then use paint and spray ink to make a gorgeous layered tag. From the home screen, you're going to choose Pattern. We're going to the built-in patterns in the machine. I'm going to choose the one that has some fancy designs. And, you know, you can go through these designs to the second screen, see all the ones that they have to offer. The one that I'm going to go for is the one that looks like a big uh, fern or leaves, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to resize that so it's the smallest that it will go. And once I've done that, I'm going to hit OK. And I see my design. I'm going to hit OK again. And then from that screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to have six of them. So I just increase the number to six and I hit set and then my six appear. Then I'm going to hit add, go back, and I'm going to add six more. But before I add these, I'm going to actually change the direction. So I'm going to hit 90 degree turn twice. So it's actually 180 degrees. Okay. Set. And then you can see that they're added right there. Now, of course, I want to move them around. So I'm going to select the ones that I want to move because I want to line them up a little bit closer to each other. And then I can drag them or what you'll see in fast forward is I'm actually going to be using the arrow keys to move them and adjust them. So exactly how I want. Once they're exactly as I want, I'm going to choose save because I want to save the design for later. Why do the work more than once? You know what I mean? Save it into the machine. And once it's saved, I'm going to be told by the machine exactly what it's saved under and I'm ready to do the next design. So I hit the home button. I delete all patterns. I go back to pattern. This time I'm going to the second screen of patterns. Choose the one with a little girl. And you can see there's so many different designs to choose from. So on the third screen, what I'm going to choose is there's one that looks like a bunch of flowers in a pot and I'm going to resize it once again to the smallest possible size and once I've done that um, you'll see it's 1.8 I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to choose a portion of the design I want which is just E that's just the one little flower part hit OK and then I know I want three rows of six so I'm going to choose 18 all together let the machine lay those out so I'm going to hit set and you'll see that it'll come up. Now I need to move it so that it's three rows of six. So I'm going to select the six that are over to the right by again going in and selecting the section that I want to move. And once those are highlighted, then it's easy enough for me to drag and drop them exactly where I want. And I can work them around until I like it. I'm going to save it into the machine. And then just one little note. I'm working with stencil film today and it can be hard for the machine, for the scanning cut to see the stencil film because it's um, mostly transparent. So I'm just taking a permanent black marker and I'm just going right around the edges. It's, it's not going to harm the stencil film in any way, but it's going to make it possible for the machine to easily for me to see where this is so that when I place my design on it I get perfect placement and again you can see that like I'm getting some stray marker marks all over it it doesn't matter I just need to be able to see this and that black outline is what helps me do exactly that so once I've loaded my stencil film up I'm ready to add my designs I'm going to go into the save data and I'm going to go ahead and choose that first little leaf pattern that we did and once it appears I know that I need to drag it out of the way so I'm going to go ahead and select all and then move it out of the way so that I can put the second pattern down so I'm going to hit OK and OK and then add and then I'm going to go back and grab that second pattern and you can see when it comes up that it comes up in exactly the same place that the leaves would have been. So now I'm, that it's all arranged, I'm ready to feed this uh, stencil sheet into the machine. It's going to scan it. And there you can see that black outline is helping me to see exactly where everything is. So now I'm ready to make my adjustments and to move first the little set of sort of tulip shapes exactly where I want them on the stencil plastic. Thank goodness I did that black outline so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the leaves where I want to see them. And I'll just simply drag them on up so that they're just 
Exactly right. So once everything is arranged to my liking, then I am completely ready to uh, move on to hit OK and OK again. And I'm ready to start cutting. So I'll choose cut when the menu comes up and we're going to cut and fast forward and you can see how quickly it goes. This stencil film is very thin. So my machine is set to a five. I probably could have gotten away with a four. You'll have to see what your stencil material is made of. And then I'm ready to release it from the machine and once it's released I can pull up and see what I have and it pulls up very easily I've got this fantastic stencil that I'm super excited about I think it looks really great you can see it a little bit better against a darker background which is what I've shown you here so we're ready to get to work I have my newly cut stencil here so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these two different parts of the stencil apart um, and then I'll cut this little bit off and I could certainly cut a third stencil from that as well nothing goes to waste so the first thing I'm gonna do is I think let's get some leaves on here and I'm gonna be using I have a little bit of gesso that I've put out here and I have a cosmetic sponge and I'm just dabbing off the sponge because I don't want too much paint on there and I'm going to go ahead now and just gently dab up and down, up and down, up and down. Now this is going to be very white on white. And you're going to be thinking that nothing is going to happen. But don't worry, it'll all come clear very soon. So my tag is now dry and I thought I might add a little bit of a book page. So I'm just going to rip. And I think I'm going to, where do I want it? Maybe right here. I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium to adhere my book page. You could use whatever adhesive you prefer. I do like a um, liquid adhesive for doing collage. And I'm just going to apply it onto my tag. I don't really care haphazardly. And then on top as well and then I might even take a bit of paper towel and wipe away some of the matte medium because I don't actually want it to be really goopy and then I'm going to go ahead and dry that up too okay now I'm ready to take my smaller stencil and I'm going to use some spray ink and I'm just going to spray through there let's see how that looks pretty cool and I hate to let this excess paint go to waste so I'm going to grab another tag and I'm simply going to flip it over and get a little bit of the reverse of that stencil right there and then I'm going to go ahead and shift this around and spray again with another color and if you're worried that it's too much, just dab and that should help. Look at that, looking pretty nice. And maybe a couple more, maybe some yellow up there. Don't let that ink go to waste. Flip it over on your other tag. I like to work on several surfaces at the same time because I think, you know, you just get something more interesting when you do that. Okay, so these are looking pretty good. I'm going to dry them up. Okay, now I'm ready to come in back with my leaf, my leaf stencil, and I'm going to go for some green, maybe a second color of green, and maybe even flip that over on the other side, and dab just having fun with all these patterns and shapes. Look how cool that looks. And then I like to dry that all up because I think drying between layers is really important. And I'm gonna go back to this stencil and back into my gesso and the sponge. And I'm just gonna dab some on down here and I'm gonna pick up some of the color from the stencil and some of the spray ink is gonna come right up also through that gesso. 
just adding some more little details wherever I feel like they're warranted. And again, continuing to dry between layers to make sure everything is just how I want it. And now I think I'm going to go a little bit crazy. I'm going to spray right up at the top here in a concentrated way. And then I'm going to tip my tag, maybe put a piece of paper towel here, and it's going to run right down. And I can do that again with another color and have it drip right down. I like the way that the drips look. And here you go, my tag is starting to come together. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my paper towel, actually let's take a clean paper towel, and I'm gonna get it slightly wet. And then I'm simply gonna wipe across the top of my tag. And you can see that A, it's gonna blend everything in a really nice way, but B, everywhere that I had the gesso earlier is coming up kind of white, which is really neat. That's a basic resist. Okay, so now it's looking pretty good. I think that I need to create something that's a really strong focal on my tag in order to finish it up. So I think I'm going to go in with some paint. It's just regular acrylic paint. I'm going to go in with my same sponge. And again, I'm dabbing off to make sure that I don't have too much paint on there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit up two of these. Ooh, that looks really nice. Starting to come up a little more defined. And now I think what this really needs is some black droplets. So I'm simply going to unscrew my ink spray and use that tab to hit up with some little droplets. And I think that my tag it's gonna be dried up and then done. So here's my beautiful finished art tag. And I happen to also have this other tag which I've started, which I could now get into, add some more stuff to, and make into something fabulous too. So, you know, nothing ever gets wasted. But I love the way that this turned out. So simple, so easy, with a, two little stencils that I made by myself. Thanks so much for joining me. If you'd like more information, please visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. And you can also find out more about the Brothers Scan and Cut at scanandcut.com.